Are you craving a muscular physique after 60, but worried about getting injured? I've been there, and I have good news. In this episode, I'll share my top 10 proven tips for injury-free weight training after 60. Get ready to train and gain without the pain. Hi, I'm Joe Brzozowski, and welcome to RIP Seniors, where we help you to get lean and stay strong for the best years of your life. Regular strength training is crucial for maintaining your health and fitness, especially as you grow older. But it's also true that as we age, the risk of injury increases and recovery takes much longer. These injuries are a serious setback to our fitness progress, something I've learned from personal experience. But don't worry. I've made the mistakes so that you don't have to. I've spent years learning the hard way how to avoid injury while still reaping all the rewards of weight training. In today's episode, I'll share this wisdom with you, revealing my top 10 tips for injury-free weight training after 60. To achieve exceptional fitness in your 60s and beyond, strength training is key. Not only does weightlifting build muscle mass and toughen bones, it also improves your balance and coordination and boosts your metabolism, uplifts your mood, promoting a healthier, happier life. But if you're not careful, you can get injured lifting weights. The aging process makes us more prone to injury, and since our body heals more slowly, it takes longer, sometimes many months, to recover. When I started lifting weights, I stupidly followed the advice of popular fitness magazines, not realizing they were written for young and experienced weightlifters who were probably on steroids. So I jumped right into tough workouts and heavy lifting, hoping for big gains fast. Well, several painful injuries later, I learned that being careful and smart is what really matters. But before we get into the 10 tips, it's important to mention that before you start any fitness program, especially weightlifting, you should consult with your doctor first to ensure it's safe and suitable for your health and physical condition. Now let's dive in. Let's jump into tip number one, set realistic goals. Your strength journey is a marathon, not a quick sprint. When I rushed for quick gains for my skinny arms, I wound up sidelined for months recovering from tendonitis. So respect your body and its limitations. You will make gains, but plan to celebrate your progress over months and years, not weeks and days. After all, you're in this for life and aiming for sustainable strength. Stay patient, stay persistent, and stay injury free. Next up is tip number two, learn proper form. When lifting weights, proper form is your safeguard against injury. It ensures your muscles, joints, and ligaments move in harmony, reducing strain and preventing unnecessary damage. I highly recommend that you hire an experienced trainer to customize your program and teach you the correct technique. It's money well spent at the start of your fitness journey. Moving on to the third essential tip, number three, always warm up. A proper warm up gets adequate blood supply to your muscles and tendons, warming them up and preparing them to lift safely. Failing to warm up before arm exercises was a major cause of my elbow tendonitis. Before each workout, do a few minutes of cardio exercise to get your heart beating and your blood flowing and warm up your whole body. Then, before you perform each exercise, warm up for that exercise by performing two sets of the same exercise but with only 25% and then 50% of the full weight. If you're short on time, cut out an entire exercise from your workout, but never ever skip your warm up. Tip number four is absolutely crucial. Use lower weights. When you're starting out with weightlifting, lighter is better. It's tempting to lift heavy, but starting with low weights allows your body to adapt and learn the movements without too much strain. A recent study from McMaster University showed that you can build muscles, mass, and strength with low weights and high repetitions just as effectively as with high weights and low repetitions. But lifting low weights for more reps is much safer. If you're new to weightlifting or haven't lifted in a long time, my advice is to start with a weight that you can comfortably perform 20 or more repetitions with perfect form. Over time, as your strength improves, you can gradually increase the weight until you're close to exhaustion in the range of 12 to 15 repetitions. I personally never lift fewer than 12 reps. 
you may be tempted to lift heavier weights with fewer reps just because it's faster. But remember tip number one, this is a marathon, not a sprint. Now closely linked is tip number five, don't lift to failure. The conventional wisdom in strength training is that to maximize your gains, you must lift to failure. That means doing as many repetitions of an exercise as you can until you can't complete another one. But if you're over 60, my advice is don't. When you lift to failure, your muscles are tapped out, your form suffers, and you're more likely to get injured. Lifting to failure may be great advice for athletes and young people, but it's not worth the risk when you're over 60. And besides, lifting to failure is not required to build muscle size and strength. My advice is to lift until you are near failure, meaning you stop when you're pretty sure that you could still do one or two more repetitions. That's how I do it, and it's both safe and effective. Now, as you progress, you'll need tip number six, increase weights slowly. As you get stronger in an exercise, you'll eventually need to increase the weight to keep challenging your muscles. When you do, increase it very gradually. A slow control progression prevents overstraining your body and reduces the risk of injury. When you can comfortably perform your maximum repetitions at a particular weight, increase it by only five or 10%. Small Olympic plates and magnetic plate mates like these are great for creating these small increments. Ready for tip number seven? Never rush your workout. When you rush, you compromise form and control and put yourself at risk for injury. Move slowly through each repetition and set. Pay attention to your body's signals and get enough rest between sets. Avoid sharp movements when picking up or moving weights. As you get stronger, you'll be handling heavier weights and you'll need to be more careful when you're moving them. This slow, deliberate pace of movement not only keeps you safe, but helps your muscles to work more effectively, improving your results. And that brings us to tip number eight, avoid risky exercises. As you age, your flexibility and range of motion decrease. You can still lift weights effectively, but you need to choose your exercises wisely. You should avoid exercises that require advanced mobility and pose a risk of injury if not done with perfect form. For example, because of my poor ankle and hip mobility, I strained my lower back a couple of times attempting to do heavy barbell squats. But don't worry, in future episodes, I'll share plenty of safe, age-friendly alternatives that are equally effective without requiring that youthful agility. We are nearing the finish line with tip number nine, stretch every day. Don't underestimate the power of a good stretch. Regular stretching keeps your muscles flexible and improves the range of motion in your joints. Tight, inflexible muscles can lead to decreased mobility and a higher risk of injury. And stretching feels great. It releases muscle tension and reduces pain. In my experience, I am more prone to injury when I stop stretching. So make sure you incorporate stretching into your daily routine. And finally, we arrive at the cornerstone. Tip number 10. Listen to your body. Your body is unique and learning to interpret its signals like pain, fatigue, and discomfort is key to preventing injury. If something hurts or feels off during a workout, stop immediately and assess it. Pushing through pain can lead to injury. So rest when you're tired, modify exercises if something hurts. Remember, you're on this journey for life. So listen to your body and you'll stay strong and injury free. And that wraps up our top 10 tips for injury-free weight training after 60. Following them will help you to build muscle size and strength while staying injury-free. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you'll never miss an episode. And I'd love to hear from you. Share your wisdom and tips for injury-free training after 60 in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Now go get ripped.